All right. It's working, my friends. The live stream is on. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If it's your first time, welcome here. If it's not your first time, welcome back. Make yourself at home because we have a tremendous program today. We're going to do so much. Like, we have tons of stuff to do. We are going to do a learning from the master quick episode slash recording so i'm gonna record I, I want to make a video for on composition so i'm gonna do that first then we also need to have um like a, a sort of a a list of questions that i'm gonna sh tell you how why why i need you to ask questions what type of questions you'll see we'll do that next but you have to remind me because I'm capable of uh, I'm capable of forgetting actually, or maybe we can do that before. This way I don't forget. And then after that, let's we'll start uh, painting, and I'm gonna continue the painting that I had today. So, hello, 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 everyone. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Estarker, Nora, Jasmine, Orsakir, virtuously beautiful. Hello, Gary. And um, and then and then fun and amazing streaming experience and just good times. Then good times. That's painting equals good times. So this is what we are up to in this. Let me just check something real quick. Okay, so I'm connected. Everything seems to be in order. Hello, Michael. Hello, Kim. Hello, Shuvo. Welcome to the stream. All right, no, let's do the questions and let, let me give you the instructions for what I have. So, my friends, my dear friends, announcement, big announcement time. Last Friday, we had the honor of receiving Brendan Schaefer for the Double the Art livestream. If you don't know, if you missed it, how, what? How did you miss it? How? First of all, if you missed it, shame on you. Just go watch the replay because it was a fun time. And Brendan was great and it was a, it was a very cool experience to be like, dual streaming almost and have not like you know your usual podcast where you interview people like static but um to have you know this experience where both people can communicate interact with chat it was a fun time if it wasn't a fun time write it down in the chat because i want to see it but i'm pretty sure it was a fun time and you can confirm that it was but it's not all. So next, it, it was so fun that we have to invite someone else, right? And you behaved exactly, Felicia. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you you did behave. You were like you had interesting questions. The like it was really I really liked it, and I had uh, half as much work as I normally have because I didn't have to talk all the time. I had someone else to talk. It's so great to have someone do 50% of your job. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine you're at work and you can invite someone to do half of your job. Sounds good, right? Uh, so that's exactly what we had. So we have to have someone else because I'm not going to do 100% of my job. That's no way I'm doing it again. So um, my next guest that I'll have the honor to say is going to be drum roll, please. I want to hear some drum rolls in chat. Drum rolls. 
I think with YouTube delay, you are going to do the drum rolls in chat, but it's going to be after I switch to the reveal. Whatever. Okay, <laughs> let's start. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to spoil. Last time I, I sort of caped the, the suspense. This time it's going to be, um, I'm going to announce today because the questions that you're going to have to ask for our guest um, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a lot of good questions. Hey, Ravens found the drum rolls. Awesome drum rolls. Okay, our next guest and some on Discord they already know drum rolls is going to be no, uh, not that. Yes. Okay. Kelsey Rodriguez. Let me remove my face. Kelsey Rodriguez, uh, YouTube artist. Uh, Extraordinaire is going to be joining us on Friday and I don't know if you're if you know her work her content she posts a lot of uh, of um, videos like kind of what I do on YouTube she does a lot of stuff she's very active she has a very very active discord where with a super amazing community and she um, talks a lot about art with the perspective of making it as some sort of a, a career right that's that's her angle so and obviously she's going to be here uh chilling with me and making art that's the, the point of double the art it's double the art so you don't have just one artist live streaming art you have two for the price of one so um so if you don't know her, you can, I, I'm, I'm gonna just, uh, I should actually just type um, or put a link. I'm, I'm gonna do that later. So what I need you to do is go in the Discord and in either live stream or in, um, <clears throat> in one of the Discords. I'm gonna actually put a, uh, I need to do that. I'm not organized enough. So um, in the Discord, you're going to need to just ask questions that are, you know, more or less related to uh, making it as an artist, kind of strategies to uh, like financial strategies, marketing strategies as an artist, how to get um, an audience from work from for social media, stuff like that, you know, kind of stuff that I don't really talk about so that's great kelsey's really going to complement this this aspect of art which is i mean frankly if you're making art for the love of it that's good but if you're making art for the love of it and you can still make a living a decent living and not be a starving artist that's even better <laughs> and um and yeah that's uh so she, she's going to be there so in the discord i'm probably i'm just going to just start a, a, a sort of a quick topic and I'll ask you to ask questions with that. So I think I'm going to do it actually right now. So if you'll excuse me, um, if you'll excuse me while I'm doing it, um, I'm going to put it in YouTube react questions. I'm gonna do it quick. I'll probably um, all right. I'm gonna make quick, quick Discord in in the YouTube React channel. I'll just respond to this uh, like uh, post on Discord. Questions for Kelsey's stream on Friday, please write them down below. You just write down the questions that you have and I'll make sure to, <laughs> I'll try not to forget them. Uh, but yeah, that's so that's the cool stuff. So excited to have Kelsey. She, she's such a nice person and yeah, it's going to be awesome. And also another huge announcement, but this one I'm not going to spoil. I'm just going to give you a slight hint a hinty hinty nitty 
PT Int. Um, we already have our, our next guest from for after Kelsey, but I don't know the day yet. It's not entirely confirmed. We still have some arrangements to do, but that's someone that was. I'm not gonna spoil. This was the top of your list when you guys suggested someone to invite. You know, was top of the list. So really, someone that I know you love. You're gonna love Kelsey. And I know that you're gonna love this next um, guest on the next Friday, so. All right, hello Eva, hello Rhea. <laughs> All right, let's uh, some uh, manage to catch the stream, that's cool. Uh, did I ha have anything else to announce? Um, I don't think so. So we're just going to start talking about a uh, composition. And forgive me if you maybe you don't like the music and you're going to be happy, but I'm going to turn off the music. This way I can clip whatever is going to be happening from what we're going to discuss next, because I'm probably going to use it in a YouTube video. So when you see the video appear live on YouTube, you will be saying, hey, I was there. I saw it. I saw it happen live. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she's pragmatic. Pragmatic Kelsey. She's a very pragmatic and she's very like she's very open. She's great. I mean, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a joy to have her. All right. So Let's um, talk about composition. Okay. Uh, why do I have this? Okay. No, I don't want this. All right. Yeah. Why do... So, composition, composition. This is a blank screen. Don't worry. So, today, like, I want to talk a little bit about uh, composition and mostly maybe I'll put this other camera I don't know this one is not great so um, size what I want to focus on mainly is something super important so like the key idea of this YouTube video is going to be this you'll you'll be the first one to know is the subject to surface ratio. That's kind of the big idea. Subject, so basically a character that you want to draw to the surface. And I'm talking, of course, about size okay that's what i want to focus on in the youtube video so that's what i'm going to talk about all right Here, this one all right first thing the proportions of your surface when you have a canvas you want to draw on your canvas actually i'm going to remove my face sorry you won't see me for the moment because i really want to have this usable in the youtube so goodbye music and goodbye Florent's face. Bye-bye. I'm here. I'm still here, guys. I'm still here. Is the sound okay? Just to check, because I don't want to ruin the recording. <laughs> How come we have like 58 viewers and like 30 likes? Are you also giving half of your job? I'm going to do something. Uh, 
I did a poll. Can we reach 100 likes before the end of this stream? Can we? That's the big question. All right. Okay. So sound is fine. Cool. So first thing is you have to think when you think about your surface, you first need to think about the general proportion. So it can be marine square or thin. And obviously you can have something less extreme. So like that, this would be what we call landscape. And this would be what we call portrait. The size like that, it does affect however much room you have within the space. How do you fill up this space? You need to place your subject. Oh. You need to place your subject within some of these space. Your subject is this, let's say this character here. The, the way you will place the subject, depending on Actually, let me try to select this guy. The way you place your character, depending on the size that you have, also depends on the proportions. Because it's not exactly the same to put it here as it is to put it here, to put it here, here, or here. And you're going to articulate the size of your subject differently depending on the size that you have to place it on. So if you have subject like that, you might want to make it bigger. So you have two things. You have the size of your subject. Actually, let me just, just erase this because for the video, it's not going to look good. So I'm going to do that. So you have the size of your subject in relation to the size of your surface. That's one of the big idea. I'm sorry to insist, but it's just like, it's going to be kind of, a, kind of the main idea of the entire kind of composition trick. So I need to record this. How did this work before the Renaissance? Let's have a look at this painting, for example. This is a pre-Renaissance. It's an old altarpiece. Um, the name is, is, the artist is Morata and Virgin and Child enthroned with scenes from, well, whatever. Okay. It's an altarpiece. In the altarpiece, before Renaissance, like we are here, we are pre Renaissance. And the idea was how do you decide whose characters are bigger? And whose character are small? Well, it's easy. You just think about what characters are the most um, are the most important, and you make them bigger. Like this, for example, the Virgin here is more important than the other characters, so she's going to be bigger, right? And you have a baby Jesus that's bigger than most of the characters. Actually, this one is kind of like, like a, a comics with several, you know, several moments described, several moments of the Bible. So basically, I'm probably not going to take this one to demonstrate this actually in the actual life. But, you know, you decide on the size of the subject based on the importance of the subject, right? Kind of easy, like there's a hierarchy. You want to make your, like the most important characters bigger. So sometimes you have some things that look kind of silly with, you know, tiny characters. I need to find a better illustration actually for the stream. So I'll do that in post, but for, for the actual video, I need to do, find a better illustration than that. But you get the point, right? 
Then came Renaissance artists and they said, hold up. I can't be just, just gigantic and you can't decide to place like tiny characters next to my feet. Like Renaissance artists said, no, 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 you can't do that because it looks silly. Well, it doesn't look realistic. What are we? Artists from the Renaissance said, hey, we have to use, we have to use perspective. We have to respect ourselves and we have to, you know, make it feel like this is an actual space. So let's use perspective. If you use perspective, highlight it. Perspective. If you use perspective, it means that you can't do this little size trick anymore. So what are you supposed to do? Now all the characters, no matter how important they are, have the same size, like in this example. Here. Now they all have the same size. So how do you make the distinction between, for example, this character, which is not supposed to be one of the main characters, and these two, which are the two main characters? It's the marriage of the Virgin. So artists started thinking, hey, how do we fit our subjects, make them appear to be important, and yet how do we fit them into this space? Hi, Christopher. All right. One thing is if they are too big to fit. One easy, because yeah, I have to say just what something that was very important for Renaissance, classical Renaissance era, was to make sure that the figures are almost um, are as visible and clearly distinguishable as possible. You want to show everything in detail because it's more kind of, it's seen kind of a, an illustration. It's, it almost has a scientific purpose. Like it's there to illustrate the biblical stories of the time and people have to learn properly. So you, you, can't, you can't dissimulate, you can't hide anything. Everything has to be within the frame. So like here is a crop, actually, I don't know if the crop is, is like on purpose or not, but like every character has to fit within the space, feet to head. So one nice trick when you can't do that is to just make them sit down. And this way, a character that would just be too big to fit, now they can just, they can just, shimmy in there and, and get into the space. So you can keep a big you can keep a big size for your um for your um character like you have a big character for a small space right and the trick is to Sit down, kneel, crouch, crouch. Just make yourself give your your body less. Like make sure your body is, is takes less space. Right. This way you can still keep the same surface and make your character bigger. What can you do then? If you have not one subject, but multiple, like you clearly have multiple subjects here. You have 
Rubens himself, because that's Rubens here and his lovely wife, he wanted to be a part of his amazing and super cool painting about a wolf hunt. He wanted to be a part of it and kind of uh, idealized his own presence, to be fair, but hey, he's the artist, he has all the rights. What can you do if you have several important main subjects? Because right here, you don't have the, just the one main subject. The main subject here is the, the chaos of the scene. The, the, the main subject is the violence. You know, the main subject is the... The struggle. How do you make it when it's not just to focus on one character and you want to make something that looks good? In this case, you keep the size of your characters normal, but you take a very large canvas. And this is a large canvas. You just the only thing you can do in this case is just make your canvas larger and kind of work on a more colossal scale. Actually, I didn't notice that my sound wasn't properly set up. Okay, whatever. It's going to be it's going to be slightly better now. Um so work on a colossal space and everything is going to look grandiose. Actually, I go back to my original my original plate. What does when you th when you think about a painting, you first need to think about how big am I, am I going to work actually? Do I take the tiny canvas? Take the tiny and no. Not this one. Okay. Sorry. Do I take the tiny canvas? Or do I take the colossal canvas? If you take it, it, it is something tiny, it's going to give an, a more intimate look. It's going to make it feel like like a little jewel, right? So if somebody wants um, like a, a portrait done for them, you can ask them what type of what type of feeling do you want for this portrait that you want to be done? Do you want something kind of humble but intimate and and that kind of feels a, a nice presence, a nice connection with the person? Because you have to get closer. The the, the painting, like you can keep the size of the subject, the size of the subject can be the same. It's just that let's say let me try to do something. Demonstrate. So let's say we have our subject here. And we have Um, hold on. And we have a small canvas or a big canvas. So if you take your subject and you fit in, you fit your subject in a small canvas. Or the if you fit your can your your character i'm just i'm working just as much on my youtube video as i'm talking to you at the moment sorry <laughs> okay all right 
need to readjust because it's better to do it now. Okay, and this, all right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm annoying. Okay. So if you take your normal character, normal size, fit this, this gives the impression of intimacy, as I said. If you take the same character and this time you put it here, then this gives the impression of grandeur, of hubris almost. It's really when you want to, how to say, um you want to it's it's a very flattering kind of ego boosting kind of size I want to make the subject bigger but for a super big canvas you don't want your you can't have the same size to subject ratio otherwise it's going to be gigantic in this case so that's what Rubens kind of wanted in his space, except that he's part of um, he's part of uh, several characters. So he's part of an entire scene. But you can also decide to make your main subject tiny and gives a very different feeling, a very different impression. Not 200, I wanted 20. Okay, <laughs> better. In this case, well, you can argue what's the main subject, but the main subject here is, in my sense, clearly the boat here. See how tiny it is compared to the actual size of the canvas. And what kind of impression does it does it send? What kind of impression do you get from that? Feeling of loss, feeling of solitude, feeling of isolation. So there's a lot of space, a lot of room above, a lot of room on the sides, a lot of room below. So it leaves the subject very isolated. I think I've got one other example. So this is the total opposite, but I, I also had a, another example, I think. And this one. I'm gonna come back to the others later. This one is by Camille Corot. It's called Hagar in the Wilderness. All right, this one, same thing. Look at how tiny the main subject is. Actually, you have two, and the two of them are tiny. And the impression is that you're drawn into the entire seen and you're left wondering you're just you feel just as alone as the characters and actually the angel is still in the distance so it's just a glimmer of hope you imagine being completely lost in the wilderness like that with no help in sight because the main character is not looking right now and somehow a divine intervention and in the case of, in this one, like you don't have the same type of divine intervention coming up, you're kind of left wondering, hey, is this going to be the end? What are, is, is this rabbit going to help the ship? You don't know, but you feel lost. Exactly as we saw the same kind of thing in Camille Corot, except that you have lost and, and 
found, I guess, with the help of the angel. But you can do exactly the opposite strategy and make your subject appear as big as you can and fit everything in, almost mimicking the almost mimicking the proportions of the canvas itself. So you make your canvas just as big as you can so that it almost feels like it's there exactly with the purpose of feeling as much of the space as possible. Yeah, that was Hagar in, in the we're gonna be, go next to it to it back then. It was like next in my my photos. Um so yeah in this case you have a very big subject for a canvas it's, that's almost the same size. It's like almost equal size. Subject and surface have almost the same size. That's something you can do as well. What effect does it have? What would you say is the impact of this choice? Of making the subject almost as big as the surface itself and fill as much of the space. What effect would you say this kind of this kind of artistic choice artistic choice has? I don't know if the delay is going to make you wait for several minutes before I can uh, I can start. All right. I don't have responses in chat at the moment. It's like it feels like being in class and sort of asking a question. Nobody wants to respond. So I'm going to respond. It's um, in this case, it can be intimacy, but it's it's if a it's very very simply a a feeling of hyper focus. You are hyper focused on the subject, so it feels like you're zooming in on the object, and it gives the same kind of feeling that you have in colossal paintings, but with a normal size canvas. So you can have a, a canvas that has a normal size. But you still get the the same feeling. I had a sorry. I had an audio issue. I just need to change something. Let me know if the audio is still good. But you get the same feeling as you have in the. Get the same feeling as with um, as with a colossal painting. So sorry for the audio glitch. I just had an audio glitch just in my head, like in my ears. I could hear it. It was hard to focus. So sorry for uh, I wasn't there for a moment. But let's switch. Now I want to talk about um, unusual unusual proportions. For your um, for your canvas, um, I'm going to readjust the size because it's going to look better for the YouTube video. Okay, so um, unusual surface. This is uh, by Odilon Redon. It's called Pandora, and you can have some very elongated canvases and in that case you want some obviously you want elongated and this works very well when there is an upside down kind of mo motion or movement see in this case even the lady was just too short for the size of the canvas because making the lady fit the entire thing would make her look like very very big like that, and you don't get the same sense of intimacy because you don't want the lady to appear too big, otherwise you don't get the same the same feeling. And in this case, um, hey cryptic, 
in this case, you you want to use tricks to elongate the composition. So here you have the tree in the background that serves as kind of a you know a, a an extension of the figure of Pandora in this case. This way you can um, you can play on the shapes, but you have to complement your subject and help your subject. It's like sending a rope to your subject so that it can go a little bit higher than it normally would. So that's what Odilon Redon did in, um, in this case. The subject here is Pandora, and uh, it's by Odilon Redon. Um, I'm sorry I don't have like all the names properly uh, written. I'm probably going to do it in the um, uh, when I'm doing the video, but it, here it's um, it was just a little bit too chaotic to do. Uh, next choice, because we haven't seen a choice like that so far, but it's kind of a, it's an evidence. If you don't have enough room for your entire subject, if it doesn't fit, and if there's not enough room in the bottom, just crop. It's pretty easy. Oops, sorry. <laughs> just, just crop. Uh huh. Interesting. Of course, you crop. That's uh, that's exactly how you work with um, with the size of your canvas related to the size of your subject. You crop the subject because maybe you don't need to see the entire subject within. The space of the canvas. Uh huh. Interesting. Any the good thing is there are thousands of ways to crop. So you can decide to crop very slightly like that. You see that he, this artist here, it's uh, Santi di Tito, Madonna and Child, with uh, Saint John the Baptist. You can see here that he really insisted on fitting everything in to the point that it's almost getting ridiculous how it's like it's exactly there like it's just an ex example of how extreme things can go if you don't want to crop and if you want to if you insist on keeping your entire subject within the frame it doesn't have to be all within the frame it doesn't matter if a little bit of the subject is behind the boundaries of the canvas. It still, it can still work, and it can look kind of. It looks kind of not very pleasing and uneasy when it's like that. It's like they are kind of cramped inside of this space. They are not. They are not necessarily. Um, they they don't feel at ease in there. It feels like the, you know, this the scene in Star Wars where they are pushed by the walls from all sides. It's um, it kind kind of gives a, a claustrophobia. Um, is that is that the word claustrophobia? Yeah, I think it's the word claustrophobia. Maybe I'm not pronouncing right. Maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. But well, all right, you, you see the point. Um, Jasmine said, not sure the previous one was voluntarily cropped. Yeah, a lot of these old paintings were cropped afterwards because of some damage, some restoration. It, it can be a thing, but yeah, I just wanted to raise the point that cropping is an option. So this one we already saw, it was not actually placed where we want. Um, all right, so this one is a very cool painting. I really love how photo photographic it looks it's crazy that it was done in the 19th century 1853 remember photography was not in like was just barely invented and you have something that today looks like a photo that you can take with your iphone it's amazing uh, andres akenbach sunset after the storm on the coast of sicily 1853 yeah, exactly. No breathing space in the previous one. So you want to give your your subject some breathing space. That's the point. Well, look at this. 
What's the subject? What's the main subject? The main subject can be the sunset, but it can also be the waves, the chaos, or the tiny, tiny characters here. Don't hesitate to crop, because one of the main subjects, I think there are three subjects, the waves, the sunset, and the characters here. But the characters are just side characters. They are less important. In terms of importance, I would say the, the sunset is the first, but it's not there. It's cropped by the landscape itself. And the other subject is the waves crashing here because of the storm on the reefs. But it's also cropped. You don't see much of it, but you still get the intensity of the scene and i think it's a very good composition where you can partially hide the most important elements of your painting don't hesitate to do that because it still can work yeah the the light is really amazing in this painting i really love it it's really one of the the biggest uh, inspirations like it almost looks like a photo it's crazy um <clears throat> and for someone in the 19th century because you can do that now nowadays like easy you just take a photo you copy it imagine not having a photo and understanding shadows um understanding backlighting and stuff so here you can just the main elements are all hidden and the fact that they are hidden and cropped is exactly the point it's like it's a statement of its own all right so this one we've seen and this one is probably the one it's the one that i had in the thumbnail one of my favorite yeah the clouds are amazing in this one um the um, one of my favorite as well by Duga, and this one is called Orchestra Musicians. Well, what about... What is that for a subject? Look at this! Do you think the subject is the dancer? Like this one? Really? Like, there's a debate to have. Like, first of all, the dancer, if she's the subject, or well, first of all, she's not part of... She's not part of the title, so... Bam. I don't think she is the subject. The subject are the musicians, but look at how they are framed. You don't see them. You see only their backs. Ah, but actually, what do you see when you go to the opera, to the ballet? What do you see when you're in the crowd? When you have a seat in the, in the opera house? What can you see as a, as a, you know, someone who goes there? Well, you see the back of the musician's head. So that's exactly the spot that you would have if you had your ticket to see this play or this dance or ballet. So actually, in this case, the cropping is so weird, like, it doesn't make sense. If the subject is these guys, even this guy, you don't see them. You can't see them, so it doesn't make sense. Why is that the subject? Well, in this case, actually, it's very smart because the subject is not, is not the dancer. It's, she's not the subject. He's not the subject. He's not the subject. He's not the subject. He's not the subject. They are not the subject. The colors are not the subject. The subject is the entire experience that you would have if you went there and saw this. The subject is being there. Again, this is a moment in time when photography was not a thing. You would think, hey, oh, this is kind of normal. I just take my phone, I take a picture. Well, they couldn't do that at the time. And even if they had photos at the time of Degas, 
they didn't have the ability to just pick up a camera and just just press a button and have a photo done. That's not how it worked at the time. You couldn't just take a photo on the fly. But Degas was kind of the one of the first one. He was inspired by photography, but he like you couldn't do that with with photography. So he made it with paint. And this composition is almost one of the first photographic compositions done by a painter, which is amazing. It's the the subject here is diluted by the very fact that the artist chose this specific size for all of these specific elements and it completely transforms the subject. It's amazing how effective this works because you forget about these guys, you see them kind of in the foreground, almost hiding the view, but they are part of the view. It's a, a very completely different experience, a very, very smart painting in a very smart uh, composition. So yeah, great, um, great composition. So I think that's all I have to say. I think that's all the recording that I wanted for my video. So, hey, Ugh. now I'm going to have time to talk. So I just need to fix my sound issue, but tell me how you're doing and how did you, what, uh, what other examples do you have? Do you think about like some specific paintings that you think I should uh, check out? Okay, now when I'm talking, I don't have the... All right, so what did you think about this? Do you, do you have other examples that you want me to check out before we, we move on? Or do we move on to the next, um, the next thing? It would be like making a painting out of... Uh, an AI generated image? Well, in the case of Degas, it's almost like, like Degas kind of was ahead of photography in his time. And he invented photography before photographers could even do it like that, which is amazing. You nailed it with Degas, he didn't use pictures to draw, but he was inspired by the new points of view that photography introduced. Yeah, the only thing is at the time photography wasn't like, you know, point and click in a way. Uh, le Christ en croix de Dali. On peut faire celle-là. Alors, voyons voir. All right, I'm, I'm working on, on submissions now. So if you have works to submit, if I have them on my um, in my database, otherwise, uh, <laughs> there are several Christs by Dali, so I'm gonna try to find one that's the most uh, representative. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. Great. I'm I hope the colors are good. I didn't check the colors, but yeah. This is submitted by uh Jasmine, I think. Was it Jasmine? I don't know. So this is, we're going to see this one. So let me go back to the bat cave. <laughs> All right, very cool composition as well. Thank you for the suggestion. Very interesting composition indeed with um, 
So what do you think? Like very elongated, um, very elongated surface. A subject that's very kind of small compared to to the the overall size of the surface. Like the actual size is rather small. However, in this case, you have a very unusual perspective, and the perspective is part of the the subject. Like the perspective is is a thing of its own like if you analyze the the painting the perspective is there you have this double movement so this double movement is by the way reinforced by the fact that this is all empty if you fill this space fill this black space here and the painting immediately gets a lot more a lot less powerful and impactful because you don't need information here because it's already there like you you kind of ruin the movement and the feeling of emptiness of solitude like if you remember the the, the words of Christ I don't know I don't have them by heart but it's like uh, my god why have you why have you abandoned me or I don't know what he like this is exactly the sort of the upside down view of this very moment it's it's amazing like the feeling of being alone in there and what's happening in the in this tiny part I don't know it's like Delhi being Delhi it's not as weird as Delhi is capable of so that's one good thing it it could be way more weird. Let's just say that. So I think that's probably a figure of one of his old memories in in uh, Catalonia. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be, but like in this case. So in the last one, so the, the point of view in the Degas one, the point of view was the subject. In this one, the perspective. And the emptiness that reinforces the perspective is the subject. So it's not just Christ. It's almost a godlike perspective. Sort of. It's like you're seeing the scene through the eyes of God himself. Or herself. Or themselves. I don't know. And yeah. It's, a, it's kind of a crazy perspective. So what else? Oh, have we? We reached 100 likes. Yay! Cool. Hey, we did it. Hey, you knew you you knew it was uh, going to be done because the the poll ended with a um, 97% chance of success. <laughs> cool. Thank you guys for the support. Yeah, mein God, mein God, warum hast du mich ver Stop. Now we have to stop. I, I was like, what's the percentage of having one? All right, so good. Thank you very much. It helps, like, believe it or not. Okay, uh, do we have other sub su suggestions or not? Or time for a little bit of painting. Man, I've talked so much. I really need to have a guest. Hello, Oil. I don't have all the full names, actually. I'm sorry, I can't. Just uh, let me check. Oil paintings by Anna. Hello, Girardot's Death by Cristobal Rojas. La Pie de Monet. Ah, La Pie de Monet, j'ai un... une vidéo complète dessus. Euh... Une vieille vidéo. Et j'avais fait une vidéo YouTube complète dessus. Donc pour le coup, euh, je ne vais pas le refaire. C'est dans mes vie un peu les vidéos d'il y a 4-5 ans. Donc euh, ouais. Alors, euh, let's try it. So. Hey Balsam. 
No, you're not. Like, you're always on time because seeing you is always a good time. Uh, okay, so what do you, I need to type it. Girardo. Sounds like a weird title. I'm not familiar. Cristobal Rojas. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, 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 okay. Cool picture. Let me try to save it. And get it in there. I, this is going to be our last submission, and after that, we're going to new document. So this is Girardo's death, the death of Girardo in Barbula, 1883, by Cristobal Rojas. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. And, uh-huh, so I'm not familiar with this artist, this painting. Um, so let me see. The subject here is clearly the flag. That's, that's my kind of my impression. It's like the flag, like the value that the carrier is holding will survive his death, his tragic death. I'm not familiar at all with uh, the story, the history behind this. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to analyze this one. It's funny. There is movement and staleness at the same time. It's a very complex painting with very complex, with a, a sort of a static yet very dynamic architecture. I don't really know how to analyze it. But from the angle that we saw earlier, like the size of the the size of the subject, the size of the main subject relative to the size of the canvas, rather small. So you see a little bit of the scene, but you don't see the whole context. Rather small. And but actually what's holding the making the, the, the subject feel more important is definitely the flag that kind of expands the presence of Girardo in, in this case. So that's the flag that sort of inflates the importance of the this character in this case, like visually. I mean interesting because let's imagine that you just let's imagine that you remove the flag that's totally kind of a failed painting. If you, if the flag isn't there, like there is absolutely no reason. Or a painting like that to happen. Like imagine, I'm just just imagining it, just trying to imagine the painting without the flag, right? It would be just very, very boring and very, you know, bland and like. But really, that's the flag that carries the entire painting. I think this is kind of a patriotic painting. Or a... So basically, the flag holds the entire life of this painting. And I think this was the point. So it's a very smart composition choice as well. The, yeah, the, the death of... Let's say it like that. The death of the character is how to say saved or redeemed 
by the life of the flag. So the fly lives on even though the hero dies. So clever composition, very clever. Very clever. The, 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 the movement is some sort of language. Yeah, sure. Sure, absolutely, but just on its own, it wouldn't mean much if the flag wasn't like the flag makes this movement make sense, right? I don't know how to express it. Yeah, it balances the composition. Yeah, really look at it again without it. It's like feels very goofy and just but then with the flag it's like oh okay I see it's like ah it makes sense right and also another important element I'm just going to check double check you don't see blood stains you don't see blood splashes or but you do see this see? there's no blood like you have blood on these characters so the artist clearly is not afraid to paint blood so you paint a gunshot with the actual shooter here in the room just notice how they are in the dust they're in the mist they are in the smoke here and this one is clearly visible no blood visible and instead of, you know, a big blood splash, you have this, which almost feels like his own blood. He's sh shedding his blood through his patriotism or... Enlève le drap rouge, celui-là? This one? Jasmine wanted me to remove this one. All right, cool, interesting, interesting paintings, nice suggestions. Thank you. I think I'm gonna, I can use them. Very cool suggestions. Hey, all right. All right, so I think I'm gonna do, um, and I'm gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna show you my own composition. Let's let's keep doing this composition that I worked on uh, that I'm starting. And I, I hope I can finish this one um, this week. So this is what I've started. So look at my composition at at the moment. Just to tell you how I've chosen the elements that I've added in this one. So this is what I'm working on at the moment. If you are wondering, yes, this is a real bird. But really, no, I'm just kidding. It's, it's uh, I just printed a little bird and make it sort of a cardboard print. So my, it's tiny still life composition. I have a, Square canvas. The size, I wanted to have something that has the, the size of an actual bird of this kind of shape. So I wanted to have the bird not too big. Like, it's not like I didn't like this was not a variable. I wanted to have the bird to feel kind of life-size. Even though life-size, in reality, you have to make it a little bit, you would have to make it bigger than that. But you have to always think that your painting is kind of like a window and you see through the window. So when you do something life-size, you actually make it slightly smaller than it is in reality. Uh, then I have some cutted lights coming from the inside of the box. I don't know what's inside the box, but I'm going to do an, another birdie bird here in the box. 
but there's going to be some light effects and color effects in the middle and uh, right here this is a floating um uh, oh man i have like such a big memory issue what is it called man I, i'm totally blocking on how it's how this thing is called it's magnetic it in indicates north ah, oh my god ah Right, if somebody can help. Anyway, so I just suspended it with wires. I have tiny wires here to suspend it. And oh, compass. Yeah, compass. Thank you to my rescue. Somebody coming to my rescue. Thank you, thank you. All right. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I remember this. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so the the idea of this composition was, in this case, it was a stability. I wanted to have something very stable here. Uh, I don't have the title yet. Generally, I don't work on the title before I um, before I entirely finish. Generally, I have I have kind of ideas, but. What I really want to focus on in this one is kind of making it a, you know, a stable base, like a pyramid based. When you have a subject like a painting to give the impression of stability, you want to have something very stable. Just like think of any shape that's like that, that gives a solid grounding. That's what I wanted to, um, that's what I wanted to have in this one. And but it's going to be this this very solid grounding in the shapes is going to be balanced by the light effects and by the fact that some objects will be floating so it's going to be appearing later on so that's the point for this one at least that's the idea i don't know if i'm gonna get there but hey i'm gonna do my best right so Mm. Now, ideally, sorry for the lens switch. Ideally, I should start working on this bird on top. I think I can do that now. Could be fun, right? I'm gonna try to do that. I hope you too long in in terms of mixing. Uh, yeah, always forgetting the most, like the stupidest, easiest words. Hey, I I kind of talked for an hour straight, making an entire sort of a. I don't know if it's if you can call this a course on composition or not, but hey, I did it. So I'm forgetting one word, like the super. The easiest one. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let me just switch to the palette. Chat is going to be... Okay. 
All right. And um, yeah. so need to take my other microphone, otherwise you won't be hearing much of me when I'm. Well, I do forget words even in French, so no, no worries there. Oh my god! It's emoji wall! Quick, 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 quick! Emoji time! Quick! Spam emojis! We need to fill the screen! No time to waste! I'm serious! We have to spam emojis emoji. in chat now before the timer runs out! Hurry up! Emoji Let's go chat. time! We have to spam emojis oh my in God. chat now before the timer runs out. No time to waste. I'm serious. No time to waste. Hurry up. Quick. Let's go chat. Let's go chat. Let's go chat. Let's go chat. Oh my God. The, the hype. The hype is real. We're going to make YouTube crash. Crash this website. Let's go chat. Crash it. Oh, and we're done. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. It, it was a great emoji wall. Good job. Wow. The craziness was real. Wow. I, I don't know. I should have, you know, with the YouTube delay, I'm sure we can have an even better screen fill if I don't have, like, if I add a, a delay, like, how, how do you think the delay is go- How long do you think the delay is? Hold on. We're gonna test how long we have, how long of a delay we have. We're gonna do this thing. Bear with me. I'm gonna clap in my hands. And as soon as you hear clap, I want you to immediately type. I want you to immediately type clap in the chat. So I'm gonna actually time it, right? Are you ready? D did you understand what I what I said, right? So I'm gonna clap, and as soon as you hear the clap, just type clap in chat. So just so that I know how long of a delay we have. All right. So let me get my timer. All right, ready? Clap. So we are 12 seconds now. 12 seconds delay. Okay, that's 18 seconds on my end. All right, so now they are coming, they are coming. All right, let me just, so 18 seconds, I think could be a good delay. So I should do the emoji wall, but actually have it start 18 seconds later, if you see what I mean. This way, when it starts, it actually starts, like you are right in there. Um, let's do, Let's do it one more time, but I don't want to confuse it with the previous one because some people are late to the show. I just want to really r do a second one to be sure. This time I'm going to say... I'm going to say... Uh, what could I say? Something silly? I'm going to say... Let's... I'm going to say monkey 
And as soon as you hear monkey, you try, you have to type monkey. Are you ready? You type monkey. Monkey. One, two, three, monkey! I'm not on mushrooms. I'm trying to find how much delay we have with this chat. Okay. Oh! 14. 14 seconds. So 15. 14 seconds. Okay. Between 15 and 18. All right. Good to know. That's good to know. It's like, you know, the normal YouTube delay, you know, the normal time that it takes YouTube to transfer the data to you. And <laughs> nice. We also have the monkey emojis. Nice. All right, cool. From my end, people are typing monkey before you say it. What? Well, I guess the delay is not the same for everyone. Oh. Hey, make sure that you also, because sometimes when you rewind or pause for a second, it stays at this point, and then you have to make sure that you hit live. It doesn't automatically goes back to live. Just saying. This can be the this can be the problem. Mushrooms. No, we are not on mushrooms here. Hello. Okay. I, I switched to my other mic. This way you will hear me when I'm here mixing my paint. Wonder if the ad caused lag. There is no lamps after an ad. Hmm. Wow, Dorothy, did you really hear monkey just right now? Well, you have so much delay, it's crazy. Um. Calm down, music, please. Actually, I want to, uh, yeah, this one. All right. Yes, the crazy thing about YouTube is like when you just pause for a moment, it keeps you where you're at. It's in a way it's very practical. I mean, not a lot of live stream services allow you to just rewind or pause. So it's cool. I think they should they should um, have something that indicates that you're not actually live because like sometimes you can miss a fun moment like if you miss emoji wall by because you you thought that you were live but you were actually like 20 seconds behind like you miss emoji wall like emoji wall doesn't always happen like you have to be there for the extravaganza yeah exactly you push the arrow yeah like you push the sort of the play bar all the way to the to the what to the right yeah oh you guys are talking about 
Duolingo. What languages are trained to learn? Unfortunately, the best way to learn the language is to have an actual use for the language. So either have a lot of conversations with people, go to the country or just talk online. But just studying kind of even in a class context, it's not not the same. Once you like, let's say you go to the country and you have to learn how to just your basic survival like you take it way more seriously than and you start actually learning like your brain really activates what it needs to learn quick and all of a sudden it gets easier to to learn Twelve million. that's way too much Yeah, immersion, exactly. Actually, I didn't need this. I'm tempted to do just the bird today. Because uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do something else. But I need to do, like, theoretically, I would need to do the background first. Just the background is kind of boring stuff. Hey, I need to do it though. So. Well, it's perfect, awesome. I'm glad. Enjoy, enjoy your croissant then. DIY epic brush washer? What do you mean? Well, I think all languages borrow a lot of words from other languages. All right, I'm sorry, people, you are going to have to bear with me. But I'm going to do background today and black background so <laughs> not a lot to see i'm sorry it's not gonna be the most inter entertaining stuff it's just what i need to do right now what can i say it, yeah i'm basically going to paint everything black so so yeah, so I can just yeah. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. The DIY epic brush washer? What do you mean?
Well, English is like it feels easy because it's like so common in the world that you kind of have to learn or you're kind of left behind on many levels in like many jobs here. But yeah, it's not the, it's not the most logical language. Let's just say that it's very not logical. There is no there is no like like phonetically speaking nothing makes sense in english and the only thing that makes sense is that it borrowed a lot of words from all over the place so you have tons of different pronunciations like all the different letters they never actually make the same sounds so very hard to makes it hard to pronounce because it's so common like it's i mean you get it at some point but if culturally english wasn't so all over the place it would be seen i think as a difficult difficult um language to learn like phonetically speaking yeah i guess if you know all the rules but just as a foreigner like a lot of stuff is very hard to pronounce and um hard to figure out how to pronounce because there's also the accentuation that makes it that makes it hard pacific ocean three c's that each sound different yeah where do your paintings go when they're ready gallery direct sale or else well it depends uh both uh, most of them, I I make them, I store them. Then I, when my gallery comes for the show, we decide together what we want to show. Um, and when I have commissions, of course, it's a direct sale. And otherwise, no. It's best to mix your own. Because here, I don't know if you've noticed, but I make it more blue or more uh, more brown. So more cooler or warmer, just as I want. And I couldn't do that with, uh, with a black from the tube. Well, if you, if you like to add black from the tube, never forget that you can mix um you can mix colors other colors with black oh thanks cody thanks for reminding me yeah sure we need this one thing oh i forgot totally forgot again we need to decide on another new art channel so new art challenge so we had painting jeff Next, we had, uh, what did we have? Monsters of the Abyss. So what's the next? What's the next challenge going to be? So I heard last time people suggesting I think very well of those artists because I'm I'm one of them <laughs> I have to say All right paint invisible things you can't cheat before it even starts Felicia so don't try to 
Ew. Alien cow with human skin tones? Ew. Christopher? What's wrong with you? Well, there's going to be some very weird stuff if you if you do that as a challenge. I don't want to see it. I don't know. If you want this challenge, okay, but I'm not watching. I'm not watching this stuff. It's going to be too difficult to explain to my wife. So I'm not watching alien cow with human skin tones. Uh, Cody says a close-up view of regular things. If, if let's say if you have someone's idea in chat that you think is great, you can plus one it. And if many people, small things. So we have small things, close-up view of regular things, and the alien cows. We're going to have a poll after that, but... <laughs> Cow in a dress, it's even weirder. Largest animal on Earth, like you know, a blue whale. Okay, so are you done with the suggestions? Should I launch the, the poll? So, I'm writing the poll as we speak. So, if you still have ideas, give them now, because I'm, I'm writing the options now. Alright, next art challenge. So, we have... Something ironic or fun. So, uh, close up of usual objects. Okay, good idea, Felicia. All right, so um, candles, light bulbs, fire. Okay. Add an option. Uh, what else? So, what what do you want? What did you want me to to add? So far, I have I have the alien cow. A close up of a u of a usual usual or on of regular object. Yeah. So a close-up of an usual object, then I have candle, light bulbs, or fire. A bonsai kitten in space, okay. Alright. Oh. Alright. And uh, that's all the suggestions. I only have four suggestions. So I have Santa, Bonsai, Kitchen in Space, or Flowers. I don't have room for everything. I don't do that. Or Flower. All right, so close up of a flower. And if you choose the final one, we'll just have to do a re second run. All right, I don't, I have only four options. So 
Like if other options come, it's going to be for a next time. I can only include four uh, options in my um, in my poll. Let me have a look. All right, so far the candles are leading the way. Oh, the alien cow didn't receive any love so far. So the final option is like flower if you want. And if it's this one, you will have to, to decide, make a tie break. All right. Mm. All right, so I need to prepare just as much paint for the surface that I want to cover here, so bear with me. All right, so far the candle idea is good. I, I like this idea. I think I would have chosen this one as well, so. I really like painting light sources in my in my painting. It's always very fun. The sun reflecting off of water. Well, maybe for a, a next one. What you can do though is always um Uh, you mean in, in the Discord? It's kind of like, yeah. It's kind of like what stream, uh, stream react is, or like if you want me to react to it, like you could post it there, or live stream channel is. Yeah, I saw. Okay, I saw your your photos last last time. Uh, great photography. Like, if you have great, like, definitely, as Raven suggests, if you want to um, do that, it's it's generally useful to have photography skills. That because painting an actual candle is kind of a a pain. Like it's pain, painful for the eye and all. It, it's useful to have a, a photography to come back to if you're in doubt, because sometimes the photography will just give you visual cues that you couldn't have in reality. It's good to have both your model and um, if you want to look at a real life example, it's good, but. If you can take a good photo of a candle or a light bulb, it, it helps because staring at an actual light bulb is not easy. Well, it, it seems like it's going to be the option that's going to be picked. So yeah, definitely. I think it will be helpful. Very helpful, actually. I'm not gonna lie, I'm so relieved that you didn't pick the alien cow. <laughs> I don't know, I couldn't have justified this 
to my wife. She would have been like, what, what on earth are you looking at? Uh, it's very hard to explain. Now a fan is not is not good enough ventilation. Yeah. Yeah, that's why imagination is important. You just recreate from your impressions what you believe happened. What one of the main one of the main things that really changed before and after photography was invented is the uh the way horses uh morses the, the way horses gallop um like this really changed because before photography like people were mostly guessing you know the the movement of the 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 legs of the horse but after photography, they could finally understand exactly the movement. But yeah, waves, it's kind of the same. Like... But if you, if you look at the waves for long enough, like they, like they come back over and over, so... All right, so are we stopping the poll? And the winner is drum roll, candle, light bulbs, and lights. Very cool. Congratulations, uh, Felicia, for suggesting it. I'll make a I'll make a Discord post later when I'm done. Yeah, that's tricky. I also take a like I also take a, a security photo whenever I do a still life like that. Like I like the photo that you see actually in the in the on the side. But it's um it's always like very difficult to have exactly the same angle as your eyes. Try to get exactly your use the same exact position like the slightest shift in the angle it's completely different in the end and also the lens of the camera doesn't have exactly the same field of view like the the best type of lens is a 50 millimeter if you have one like the most natural looking lens compared to human field of view. Thank you, Dream.
I'll see you dream. Have a good one. Yeah, dream. I don't know. Dream is Anya. I, I keep forgetting that. I have so many usernames. The zoom didn't work? Why? Um, my thoughts are... No. Um, because... I, I think people will post... Well, I need to make up the rules so that I need to make up the rules so that people don't post like pictures they're not allowed to. Like people that they don't have the rights to. I don't want this to be, you know, kind of a Pinterest where everybody is just um, I don't want it to be kind of, you know, people stealing from Pinterest and stuff. I don't know. I just need to figure out the rules and I just don't really want to do that at the moment. But hey, that could be a good, good idea. I'm not sure. Or maybe just post links. Yeah, also, yeah, exactly. I need to find a way for people not posting cows with human skin. Please don't, don't ask me journey to do that. Or like, don't, don't send it to me. Did the commands work? Can can somebody try one more time? I I didn't I didn't see really if the commands worked or not.
Oh yeah, I agree. The bash cows are nice and all, like, but they have actual cow, you know, leather. I'm worried about cows with human skin. That's what I'm, I'm worried about. Like, grossed out by the idea, let's say. <clears throat> By the way, before we have uh, Kelsey Rodriguez for our next guest stream, can you please, can I ask you to please um, test the, can you test the commands, the following commands, please? Is it, is it possible that like exclamation point split guest and host just to check if it works or not, just to be sure. It's better to, to test live. Palette is 1L. Just test the, the commands that are there. Just those one on top. I just need to know if they work or not. Because last time they didn't, for some reason. Guest cam. Host cam. Okay, so right now it should it should be on guest though. How come it didn't go to split guest? cam? Okay. Because I don't know, I, I there is a I can add you know a, a cooldown so that. There's no, um, there's no spam and like it, like it's not too chopped off, but I, I, I noticed, I think the cooldown is what has, uh, created issues last time, but apparently it does work. It should be host cam. Okay. Guest cam. Okay, so this would be the guest. So Kelsey would be here. Like the big black screen would be um, Kelsey next time. Okay, so it works. So I, I don't know why it didn't work last time. I guess it's like, just wait once. Split cam. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna try my kill switch because I add a kill switch that just if I need to if I need to turn this off. Okay, try now. Can you try now? Command. I'm... Switching to palette for 10 seconds. Wow, that's pretty nice. Back to easel. Okay. So now the host, guest and stuff, they shouldn't work. But... Palette, zoom, and all the rest should still work. Yeah, okay, perfect. It works. So my kill switch engaged 
properly. If you get the reference, you get 1,000 points. I don't know what these points are, but if you get the kill switch engaged. Command, zooming in for 10 seconds. Reference, you're a good one. Zooming out. Oui, oui, un délai, un décalage assez énorme, Aurélia, c'est sûr. Ça dépend vraiment des gens, et il y a aussi des gens qui, pour le coup, euh, ça dépend vraiment du YouTube. Ça dépend vraiment du YouTube. Ok, so I re... I just... Um, just to make sure it works when Kelsey gets there, I re-enabled the commands. Test. Good. I don't think a lot of people would hang around though <laughs> if I played with the with metal in the background. Like I'm not this kind of guy, you know. I love metal, but it's like I'm aware guest cam. I'm aware that it's not made for everybody. Split cam. Host cam. Yeah, you need to get ready for Friday because I'm not switching cams manually again. No way. Last time I had to switch the camera manually. Really, Brendan last time, last Friday, Brendan was doing half of my job, but I wanted even, Command. Zooming even in for 10 seconds. less than half. So I had Zooming to out. manually switch the camera myself. I'm not doing that. It's your job. Like, you have to, like, and see, my strategy is to, my strategy is to do less and less of, uh, to do less and less each time. So, try to put you in command, have guests. So, I start with one guest and then I have two. And every time the percentage of stuff that guest I have camp. to do each stream is lower. Well, Christopher, why do you switch to guest? There's no guest. Command. Switching to palette for 10 seconds. Wow, that's pretty nice. I should probably... Well, Back to easel. I'm gonna start g giving cooldowns to the commands. If you spam too much. Split cam. Yeah, you are control freaks. Command. Zooming in for 10 seconds. Zooming out. Host cam. Yeah, that is is right. And you know what? I can guarantee that on Friday 
I can guarantee that on Friday it will it will not work. So it's going to be a running gag at some point that the commands never work when they're supposed to. And the rest of the time they're like perfectly they're perfectly working. But just when you need them, that's Steven for you. Can you do guest then zoom while in guest mode? No, you can't at the moment, but I can make it happen. Do you want this? Do you want this to happen? It's like I can do that in like, would take me 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Post cam. That can be done. Could be interesting though. Yeah, zooming on the guest cam could be an interesting thing, actually. But it means... All right. All right, so hold on. I can do it live, so this way we can test live. It's always preferable. Okay, so I have guest cam. I'm gonna duplicate this one. It's going to be called guest zoom. Yeah, default is split mode. So every time you enter a guest related command, like it's going to last 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds and then split mode default. It doesn't stay in, in place. Like it, it always goes back to split mode at the end. I'm making a guest zoom right now. Um, so I need to make another command. Command, switching to palette for 10 seconds. Guess wow, zoom. that's pretty nice. Back to easel. Okay, so this one. Okay, and then um, okay, and 
this would be um so right now i don't have i need to have a a window on discord I'm gonna take host this. cam <clears throat> okay stop stop the stop the commands right now please otherwise i'm gonna have a hard time making the new one guest zoom it's normal it's a black screen it's normal okay So this should be a zoom, kind of. It's my face right now, but it's... Okay. So now, this would be a zoom. So this is the zoom. Like, my face is very big right now. And so that's it. Now try. Uh, it's just that I need to do it here and I'm going to be in. Okay. All right, it should work already. Type exclamation point guest zoom. And it should work. Guest cam. it works apparently also i've already triggered it but guest cam yeah if you trigger guest it zoom. again it doesn't it doesn't um change and gets back to Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Oh, sorry. Well, the commands will momentarily not work. Just now they should guess zoom again all right it's a black screen it's normal we don't have a guest so this will allow you to zoom on the guest that's that's a good idea actually i'm glad you, you suggested it it's cool cool idea This Steven can be a useful bot sometimes. I just have to I just had to email Steven saying, hey, make this happen, and it happened. Hi Cloudface. I think we can get out of Cloudface flexing with the personalized emojis. Hey, I have them as well.
So I got that I picked up gray with this one. Like the tiniest amount of gray in there, like a little bit of white just doesn't make the black that I want. I want something deep. Ah, reference, reference zoom. Come on. I can make a reference zoom function. But it's not as easy. I need to I need to do a lot more than what I did before. So I'm going to do it offline. But yeah, it's a good idea, actually. It's a good idea. It's like, because for just guest zoom, I just had to take the same settings that I had for guest and just like zoom it, zoom it, zoom it in. I don't know how to call it, how to say. But yeah, it's, it's just, I had to just copy paste and increase the scale right for this one i it's a bit different but it's a good idea a studio cam 2 yeah um studio cam 2 i could have like switching to that i thought about it like making a switch to this but it's kind of boring if you if you watch like that it's like blend and like whoa like what's the point like if you want, I can have this. Like it's very easy to make a command for this. But it's like, what's the, what's the point of that? Fridge cam, balcony security cam, <laughs> cat cam. Unfortunately, my my cat is not is not sleeping in my studio. He never wants to hang out here. He doesn't like what I'm doing here, which is. Putting stuff all over the place, moving canvases around. Like my cat is very annoyed by me when I move furniture around. He doesn't really like that. So he never really wants to be there. Sometimes is during the summer, he sleeps under the bush right next to my window, but on the outside. So I could have a, a summer cat stream, but in the winter he goes in the in the bedroom and he just go next to the 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 here. He doesn't want to be outside during the winter. He just wants to have a you know just go outside for a walk and then just comes back and have a nap. Inside. Cat point of view. That's nice. Good idea. Well, actually, I thought, you know what I thought about? Is to have a brush point of view. Kind of, you would have like a camera tucked to the brush. And you would, it would be like very, you know, very shaky. Actually, let's try. Let's try something. Could actually be a, a revolutionary idea. If I can untuck this one. Oh, whatever. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, I thought about having something like that, like, you know, like your uh, Call of Duty painting edition. 
like kind of a camera like that, like attached to the brush maybe. But it would be very, you know, ugh. hard to see actually. You don't see much. You you just see the hand, like you know. <laughs> Something silly like that. I thought about it and then I was like, hey, come on. This is just stupid. Let's not do that. Yeah, this is cutting edge. I mean, oh yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Dizzy cam. We, we can call that dizzy cam. That's exactly the point. And when I thought about it, I was like, do I really want to have my viewers throw up and have seasickness? But hey, imagine being a brush, you know? It's not often that you get to see the world through the eyes of a brush. I mean, we, we, we can make brush cam a thing. We have to make brush cam a reality. If I get elected, I'm going to make brush cam a reality. See, I give you a, a, a politician promise, so I'm pretty sure that I can never keep it and I'm, I'm fine. It's like a, a it's trick it tricked you there. All right, I did virtually nothing today but i did nothing for two and a half hour i just made a background and i just talked well pff, to be honest i i enjoy the streams where i do much less like the streams where i make focus too much on the painting I don't don't get to talk as much don't get to interact well we actually did a lot like together it's just I did I didn't do much on my painting like there's just a black background okay good good job man I'm like super productive it's just that but we together we did a lot like we made a new camera appear we made a, we voted for the challenge, the new challenge. Like there's a lot going on. It's just not really on my, on my side. I covered a big part, but I just covered it with black. It's like, like it should just take me 10 minutes and then I'm off to the next stuff. Whatever. I had a good time. I had fun. So it doesn't really matter. Like the point is not to be the most productive. I do. I was very productive in the beginning filming for the composition video though. So one thing that I'm happy about is just that I want to finish this one before next Sunday and I'm afraid that I'm afraid that it will be um, too short does the challenge have to be a new painting 
I think, uh, no, not necessarily. You can take an old one. If you want to challenge yourself, you can do a new one. Like, we're not gonna force you to do anything. Hey, see you. Okay, I'm gonna make a little overlap, this way I can... I can always... Um... Like whenever you're making, you know, just a transition between your background and your subject, you can pre make a little bit of overlap this way it can make it easier to make the junction later on not too much just a very very small overlap Thank you. 
<laughs> I was in the car. Isn't is it safe? Well, I hope you drove safely. I'm sure you did. All right. Oh, I just realized that I'm actually um, not painting or um, filming. Nah, sure. Like a lot of people actually only experience the live stream through listening because like most of the time, you know, you're not going to always stare at the screen for two hours. So a lot of people actually have it in the background and just mostly listen, to be honest. It's kind of actually a lot of them, a lot of creators have also like, you know, podcast versions like audio only versions in my case like for painting like it wouldn't really be <laughs> wouldn't really make sense like what good is this if you can't see the picture but like a lot of streamers do um they release an audio only version exactly for that because like people take it like listen to the the podcast the stream in their car or while uh running for example in my case my my stream this type of content it's it relies a lot on on uh, the image if i don't have the image what what am i doing But I, in a way, like a lot of people actually have a audio listening only experience, definitely. So I don't know, I could release an audio only version, I don't, I don't think it would really matter. I listen to a lot of stuff while I paint. I'm also listening to, I, I do listen to a lot of pod, pod, podcasts, sorry. Um, yeah, definitely. What is this quote, Jasmine?
Ooh. Close up. I swear one day I'm gonna drop one of these lenses. This is my close up lens. This is what I use so that you can really see from up close. And this is my wide angle. Oh, my friends, this was a good stream. Very entertaining. We accomplished a lot. I didn't. I didn't, but we accomplished a lot together. We came up with a new uh, command. We, um, we did a lot. So that's pretty cool. I'll see you for the next stream. Don't miss Friday. It's going to be awesome. Kelsey is going to be with us. It's going to be a very nice moment. She's a great artist, wonderful inspiration, and uh, it's going to be fun. And it's going to be an excuse for you to play with the camera. That's nice. All right, my friends. Thanks again for sticking up with my my random life all the way there. You did it. You're the bravest. Congratulations. Bye, guys. Okay, time to end. Yeah, I hope you can make it on Friday. See you, everyone. Bye-bye.